Hello, I'm Dan from Edimo Electric Bikes, and today we are going to do a review of the new Homage 4 from Reese and Muller. So this new homage for the 24 season is called the Homage 4 rather than the Homage. And the main difference between the two bikes is that the Homage has now moved over to the Bosch Smart System. So Bosch Smart System gives us a couple of benefits. One is the Flow app that comes from at the phone. And then there's a few different displays that are on the front of the bike. So we've got as standard an LED remote that's on here. And then we've got some different displays, Kiox 500s, 300s. Um, and that's the main difference you're gonna see um, on this bike. So looking at the bike to see um, the different options that are available, let's start by first of all thinking about the gearing and everything um, we can have on this bike. So Homage um, historically has had three different types of gearing, a touring, a vario and a roll-off. Touring is a chain and cassette with a derailleur. A Vario is an Enviolo hub with a Gates carbon belt drive. And the Roloff hub is a Roloff E14 electronic shift gearbox, again with a Gates um, carbon belt drive on it. So three different types of gearing that you can go for. In addition to that, on each one of those, you can go for the high speed version of it. So high speed is something made by Bosch and it's a slightly faster motor and it will assist you up to 28 miles an hour. Now, we don't buy those in a standard um, at Edmo Electric Bikes um, because in the UK, they are not legal without having them registered as a moped. So you'd have to have a little number plate and you'd have to wear your helmet and get the relevant insurance as well. But if that's something you're interested in, give us a call and we can have a chat about um, getting one factory ordered for you. So this bike, as standard, I would say there's three different gears you can go for, touring, vario or roll-off. Looking at the specification of the bike, let's start from the front of the bike and make our way through it. So all the homages are GT bikes by standard. So GT means that we're going to have the wider tyre on the 27 and a half inch wheel. So here we've got a 27 and a half inch wheel with a 2.4 tyre on it. Um, this is the GT, so there you can have a GX as well, which is an off-road. GT has the road tyre, which is a Schwalbe Moto X tyre. Nice smooth rolling pattern for uh, riding on the road. Great for commuting, lovely on the tarmac. If you're going to start straying onto some of the more slippery stuff like we've been doing today, then you'd be better to go for the GX pack that has the Schwalbe Johnny Watts tyre on it. Just a slightly wider tread pattern on it, allows it to fling out the mud and then bite back into the ground again to make it a little bit safer as you whip around some of the corners. Next thing to look at on this bike is air suspension. So this air suspension can be adjusted. We've got a little um, lever on the top right hand side here that allows us to move it anywhere from um, open through to firm. So we can change how much travel we're getting on the suspension. And when the bike is first delivered, uh, the suspension is set up for the user weight. So on the other side, there's a little cap and inside it looks like a Schrader valve. We use a shock pump and we can inflate the um, suspension so it's set up correctly for the uh, rider. Really important thing to do when you first get your bike. Not many people realize that's something that you've got to get set up. Don't panic, we'll sort all that out for you when we deliver the bike. So one of the really popular options that we can have on this bike is to have a front rack and bag. So Reese and Muller make a, a rack that bolts onto the frame, four bolts just here, sits out, solid little ledge, and then on it you can have the um, Reese and Muller bag as well. Um, total of that is about 200 pounds, and it's a really popular option for most people. If you decide you want it aftermarket, completely possible, give us a call. We can supply you with the, um, the rack, the bag, and the extender for the um, light with the bolts and everything, and you can actually fit it yourself. Next thing, I don't know if I just mentioned it, um, hydraulic brakes. So as standard, we've got hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear on this bike, um, incredible stopping power. Um, one of the really nice things, and this bike is actually fitted with it, it's not obvious, but on those hydraulic brakes as well, you can have the new Bosch, um, ABS 2.0 I think it's called, which is an anti-lock braking system which works with your brake levers and there's a little extra disc you can see down on the front wheel and it senses the speed of the two wheels and if they start travelling at a different speed what it'll do is start pulsing the front wheel and stop it locking up. That is absolutely brilliant and we've been using it today. Um, if you're coming along, you, you need to be on some slippery ground to make it work. If you're coming along and you grab hold of your front brake, it will not lock up. 
it will just bring you to a stop, which means that you're not going to slide out on a corner and you're not going to be going over the handlebars. So um, ABS brakes, really good. On the old version of it, it was quite a big lumpy system that sat up here uh, that wasn't very attractive and it put a lot of people off. Now, I don't know if you can even see it on this bike, but it's actually hidden down here on the back of um, this stanchion. Um, there's a little unit that's sat there and then there's another disc on the inside. So it's really inconspicuous. So you probably wouldn't even realize you got it. I think the ABS is gonna become really popular. It's a safety feature that doesn't cost a fortune that it would just make sense to put it on your bike, especially if it's gonna stop you going over the handlebars. Moving up onto the handlebars, uh, let's talk about the shape of the handlebars. This bike has a comfort pack on it. So that means that instead of having the standard flat handlebar, it's got this swept back shape handlebar, which is really nice in that it pushes you upright. And when you're riding, you feel like you're sitting upright, like on a Dutch bike, that sort of feeling. It's really, really lovely. Um, and it has a slightly wider saddle. However, um, we've been riding this off-road today as well. And when you get these swept back handlebars that are pushed in, it, it feels quite narrow and it feels like you don't have as much control of the bike. So my preference would definitely be to go for the wider flat standard handlebar. Um, but if I was just to be maybe commuting backwards and forwards to work and I was just sitting there happily looking around the whole time, maybe the, the comfort handlebars are, are quite a nice feature um, to have. Either way, the comfort handlebars saddle is a no cost option. So you choose one that you want to go with it. And if you decide further down the line that you didn't like it, you can always change back. It's just a handlebar um, and you can just go for the flat one and put everything back on again. Moving along, let's start on the outside of the handlebars. These bikes are fitted with Ergon grips as standard, really nice um, shaped grips. They've got this slight sort of flare out the back of the, the grip that just gives a bit more support around the back of your hand so that um, you're not putting all the weight straight across on a narrow bar. It's just giving more support to your hand. So it feels far more comfortable. If you're doing lots of miles, um, it can save you the palms of your hands. So they're, they're nice and made by Ergon, fantastic uh, manufacturer, really good quality grips, not just something cheap chucked on um, to get them out of the shop. Coming in a step, this one is fitted with the Enviolo hub. So this is a GT Vario, this bike. That means that what we've got next is a little grip shifter up on here. And we're gonna grab this and we're gonna roll it backwards and forwards towards you to go for a higher gear, to pedal slower, to travel faster, and wind it away from you to get your legs spinning up to start traveling up the hills. Uh, the other options you can have on here are a um, touring version, a version, a chain cassette and derailleur. With that, it's trigger shift, so it's push and click with your finger to change gear. And then the top spec one is the roll-off system with the E14 electronic hub. And you've got two buttons on the handlebar, a little up and down to press, and that's electronically transfers the signal down and changes the gear in your hub for you. That's quite nice as well, because when you come to a stop on that, it has a starting gear, so it will index back down to the gear you set, normally gear five, ready for you to ride off again from the lights. Most important next, got a lovely little bell. Um, hidden down under all that, um, which on this bike to be fair, is probably not in the greatest place, needs a little bit of a shuffle around. There's a button here for your main beam and dipped light. So we've got supernova light on here. I think this one is the M99 Mini. It's quite a significant size light and it is really, really bright. But the nice thing about it is it's got this main beam and dipped light as well. So if you are going to be uh, riding at night, so if you are gonna be doing some of the um, commuting stuff at the beginning of the end of the day, it's gonna be dark as we go into the winter. Um, this light is brilliant. One, you can definitely be seen by everybody. And secondly, you can see everything. So it properly floodlights. So imagine like a, a car light when it sort of lights up in the trees and you can see everything around. You get the same off this. Really, really nice light. Next feature on this bike. So this is something that you can choose. Under the left-hand side, there's a little lever um, to press, and this one activates what Reese and Muller would call the lowerable saddle. Um, we would probably call it a dropper seat post, which is more commonly known as. Um, and essentially, it works like an office chair, a pneumatic office chair, that if you imagine you sit on your chair, you pull a lever and the, saddle, and the seat goes down, and then if you pull the lever and lift yourself off it, it comes back up again. Got the same on this saddle. So press the lever, put the weight on it, and the saddle will drop down, take my weight off, and then it'll come back up. So you can set it wherever you want. Now, the way that people tend to use this is that they'll set the saddle height when it's up here for their leg to be stretched when they're riding, but that might mean you might not easily touch the floor. So as you come up to the lights or you want to stop, 
drop the saddle down and you can put your feet planted safe on the floor, nice and steady, so you can stop at the lights and you're not gonna fall over and everybody laugh at you. So um, really, really nice feature. Um, and most people that buy this bike buy the dropper post. I don't think I can think of any that we've sold actually without that dropper post. So it's a, it's a good option to have. Next thing is a combination of two parts. There's, um, Reese and Willow call it their cockpit. So uh, the cockpit is all about a stem that we've got here that allows us to adjust the handlebars to bring the handlebars up towards us or drop them down. So it just gives us another level of adjustment to get a really good position. Um, but when they sell the cockpit, they are combining it with some um, Bosch displays and things that you can get. So there's two versions, well actually there's three versions of display that you can get on this bike, but they all have the cockpit, the adjustable stem as standard. The first version of it is a Purion 200 display. A Purion 200 is a bit like the LED remote that we've got on this um, bike here, except it has built into it a little LED screen sorry, LCD, yeah, LED screen, color screen, that gives you all the information like your speed, how much assistance you're getting through a really nice little simple um, display. That's the basic option you're gonna get on this uh, bike as standard. It's higher than the um, Intuvia display and just a standard um, LED remote with no display. Um, what it does mean is that you've got this weird gap in the middle of your handlebars that's just blanked out because you haven't got a screen. So the next version up goes back and uses this LED remote that we've got and it pairs it with a Keox 300 display. So that's what's on this bike. It's a little color screen uh, that's on here. It gives you again all the information that you need, like the speed that you're traveling, the assistance you're getting, um, the assistance level that you're in, I'll get to that in a minute, um, your battery, charge, your range, you've got everything you want, and there's even a basic sat nav built into it when you use that with your um, Flow app from Bosch on your smartphone. Last option you can go for is something called a Keox 500, which is a slightly bigger version of this screen, so it's easy to see. One thing that Reese and Muller don't supply with this is if you take this um, screen off, you can actually change it and go for something called a smartphone grip, which will hold your phone um, in a little grip and it will click straight onto this here and it's got a charging point for your phone as well. So Bosch have always been really awful for having charging points for their phone. So it's nice to see that that's gonna be an option that we'll be able to put onto these bikes. So moving down a little bit further down the bike, let, let's look at the really obvious thing on this bike. This one's white and um, there's two different colors. I, I don't know why I told you this one's white. It's pretty obvious this one is white. <laughs> there's two colors you can go for. There's a, a white or there's a, a navy, which is called um, deep sea something. Deep sea, Duncan's in the background, deep sea. Blue metallic. Deep sea blue metallic. See how I remembered that? <laughs> it's navy. So there's white or navy. Um, the is it pure white? Pearl. pearl white. Oh, I'm so close with all these names. Okay, there's two colors you can get. There's pearl white or there's deep sea blue metallic. There you go, white or navy. Um, you're, what you'll find is when you go to specify the bike, if you go for the dual battery version, bizarrely, you can only have it in a deep sea blue metallic. If you go for the single battery bike, which is what this one is, then you can either, ha either have it in um, deep sea blue metallic or pearl white, which we've got here. Um, in here is a 625 watt hour battery. It is the smart system. Um, and with time, there will be a second uh, version, the same as we've got now, where we've got the two batteries that come out the side, which will give us a total of 1,250 watt hours of power, a dual battery system combined with the Bosch smart system. It's gonna be really good. Um, it's gonna give us more capacity than you could ever possibly want. And I'd say a range of definitely in excess of 100 miles, maybe about 120 miles, depending on the gearing that you go for and the setup you go for. So a massive, massive range on, on a bike, um, which, is, which is good fun. Another thing here to look at, which to most people is gonna be completely insignificant, but to me it's really, really exciting because I've spent a lot of time with these recent Muller bikes. Um, this little charging cover that we've got here, is a huge improvement on what we've had for the last three years from Reese and Muller. It's been a bit of a, a gripe that everybody's had is that there was a, a charging port cover that had a little hinge on it and over time it would just snap. So we would endlessly just give them out to our customers as replacements, no charge obviously. Um, Reese and Muller have actually dealt with the problem and they've made a proper hinged version of this cover uh, with a little magnet on it that just closes. 
that is going to last so much longer and everybody who owns a recent mullet is going to be really really jealous of this so you just want to watch out they don't try and nick it off you um so yeah really nice feature that is um, that's been upgraded on it you really really like it. <laughs> is it really sad that like we've got this incredibly good bike all the top features you could possibly have and the bit that i'm most excited by is a little plastic cover with a hinge <laughs> it's sad and the people who are going to buy this bike aren't even going to notice that because they didn't know the crap one that existed before <laughs> it's really really good so other thing on this bike there's three different frame sizes that you can go for um they are this is from memory 50 no 49 54 and a 58 centimeter frame. Um, I'm getting useless at these because there's so many frame sizes now I can hardly remember them. The 58 centimeter frame is gonna take somebody up to about six foot six. The, fifth, the 49 centimeter from somebody five foot four, I think those sorts of sizes. So that's the range of people um, that are gonna be riding them. This one here is the middle one, which is a 54 centimeter frame. I've been riding this today. It's, I'm six foot one. I felt a little bit cramped, but the only reason for that is, I think is we've got these swept back handlebars, which just means it's pulling it back towards my knees a bit. But if I was to be buying it, I think I would go for the larger size. I'm on the cusp of two sizes, um, which is strange because I would have thought I was just automatically in the top size rather than medium size. The bike tends to be quite a large bike anyway. So if you haven't tried one, it's worth trying one uh, before you buy one anyway, just because of the sizing of these bikes. Next thing to look at, whilst we're still sort of considering the whole frame thing that's going on is, it's worth looking at the shape of it. Now, most people will look at this bike and um, they will think it either looks odd or it's really impressive. There's something that stands out. There's this line that goes up here. Now, the reason that we've got this line going up is that this is a full suspension step through bike. So you don't normally see something like this. You know, it's quite a difficult thing to achieve. This part of the frame here is actually separating the rest of the bike and building the, the weight of the rack and the luggage back into the frame again, which allows this whole rear swing arm in here and the wheel obviously attached to it to be completely independent and to move around. So you're not loading all the weight of your luggage and everything onto the wheel and then just doing away with the suspension that you had. So that has got a complete swing arm in it. That's why you've got this rather um, interesting, let's say, different um, design uh, that's here of this big piece that's sticking out to allow that to happen. Looking down here, this, what we've got on this bike, this is a Bosch Performance Line CX motor, smart system, whatever new name that they've given, given them. Essentially, this is a Gen 4 motor. This is 85 Newton meters of torque with 250 watts of nominal power. Uh, that's putting out a peak of somewhere up like 600 watts, being brought back down to the nominal 250 that is legal in the UK, kicking out 85 Newton meters of torque, which really gives you that grunt when you go to um, accelerate up a steep hill. So this is a top spec Bosch motor on this bike. Um, and I don't think you would want to go for any other sort of motor if you're seriously considering doing some big hills or big miles. It's, it is the best thing you can possibly get. It is a smart system motor, but the motor is exactly the same as the one that they've been using before, just repackaged with different cable connections on it. You'll notice that the way that uh, the motor is connected to the rear wheel on this bike is using this. So we haven't got a chain, we're using a Gates carbon belt drive on this benefits of a Gates carbon belt drive is there is no oil. So if you're going to be putting this in and out of, I don't know, a camper van or sort of storing it somewhere, you're not going to get oil all over yourself. You don't have to remember to oil it is another nice thing. Um, it doesn't stretch like a chain. So a time straight chain stretch and you have to change it at 70% worn. Um, and also when you use change, you normally have a cassette on it. So it has to be indexed to move up and down those gears. The Gates belt drive is direct drive, one sprocket on the front to one sprocket on the rear, and it just keeps doing that job all day long. And it will last for thousands and thousands of miles. And all you need to do is every so often, remember to give it a little wash and to get all the mud back off it, and then just spray a little bit of um, silicon spray on the inside of it. There are two other options for the gears, as I mentioned earlier. You can go for the chain of cassette. The chain of cassette version on this is brilliant. Um, it is the most efficient way of transferring the power from the front to the rear wheel. Um, 
but with that comes some maintenance as well. So you've, you're going to need to remember to be oiling that. You're going to have to be um, indexing those gears every so often, and you're going to have to change chains as they wear. And also probably for every three chains you go through, you change a sprocket as well. So there can be some cost in the maintenance of that. We find a lot of people go for the Vario version of it. And I'd say if you're looking at doing commuting, tarmac riding, maybe some leisure riding, sort of cafes and pubs and that sort of thing, you'll find the Vario hub is absolutely perfect for that. It gets away from the maintenance of the chain of cassette. If you're thinking of doing some more serious riding, getting some more distance in or getting some bigger hills or trying to do some off-road stuff, um, I would be sort of thinking either upping the money and going for something like the Roloff Hub with the 14 and speed gearbox in the rear, or possibly going down the money and going for the chain of cassette and just bearing in mind you've got to do the maintenance on it and it's going to cost a little bit more to look after your bike going forward. So that's your three different options. When we start coming back up um, towards the back of this bike, um, like most of the recent mullers that are out there now, um, Integrated into the rear rack, we've got these MIK adapters. So MIK is a company that is owned by Basel. They make um, trunk bags, pannier bags, and all sorts of stuff. And the MIK fitting is a fitting that just clicks straight into this rear rack. Um, so if you bought one of those, you could clip those in. Um, you could also just put on things like your uh, Valde or your um, Ortley panniers. They will fit straight onto this rack, onto these rails. They come with grommets in them and they fit onto these rails no problem at all. Or lastly, there's this nice little rubber um, strap on the back of it. So if you, um, you're out and you take your jumper off, you can always roll it up and sort of strap it underneath to, to lock it on there. Looking under here, hidden just behind the saddle, you'll see this bike comes as standard with an Abbas Bordeaux folding lock. Uh, this is key to like for the bike, so one key for this uh, will unlock the battery, drop that out, and you'll also be able to unlock the um, Abbas Bordeaux folding lock. Uh, nice little security device uh, and fits very nicely in behind the saddle just there. I think this one is a uh, silver or bronze rated for your insurance, so if you should be wanting insurance, then you do need to upgrade your lock. Give us a call about that. We can help you with that. We've got some sneaky ideas about that. Looking towards the back end of this bike, uh, one of the really cool features about this bike, if I just turn it on again, um, on the back here, we've got our rear light, which is our one, two, three, four, five LEDs sitting on there. Um, I don't know if you can see this. When I pull the brake, uh, you can see this light up because we've got an integrated brake light built into this. So it's not only just a main beam and dip light on the uh, front, but a brake light built into the rear as well. So if you are serious about riding your bike as an alternative to a car, these are the types of features that you're really going to be wanting on a bike like this. And obviously the homage comes fitted with it as standard. So on this bike, um, we have a number of different settings for assistance that we can go for. There's one stupid one called off. I don't know why anybody would ever use that. Um, and then we've got eco. It's set up with auto is the next one and then sport and turbo. Now auto, we've been riding this bike all day just in auto mode. So we took it out of the shop, pressed auto, and then we haven't changed the assistance level again today. And it's been really, really good. Um, it, decides how much assistance it's going to give you but it drops it down when it can so it doesn't just say oh you always want turbo it knows when you're starting to climb a hill and when you're having to work harder it looks at how you're using your gears and you'll see the power assistance coming in and going back down again so we've sat in auto all day i guess it's been brilliant but we have noticed we used a fair bit of battery um, the Enviolo hub we've got here is not the most efficient, so we know that's going to use a bit more. We know using the auto mode is going to use a little bit more um, power as well. But the benefit of it is that you just pretty much forget everything that you have to do. You whack this on, stick it in auto, just twist the gears a bit and off you go and uh, start riding. So as a simple commuting bike, something that you don't have to think about too much, about pressing buttons, twisting, all this sort of stuff, this is really, really nice. Get on, jump on it and start riding it. So other options, if you're looking at recent Muller bikes that are out there, you're probably considering the Nevo. Um, the Nevo is uh, recent Muller's step through um, version. Big difference between this and the Nevo is that the Nevo doesn't have the rear suspension on it. So most people in their heads will think full suspension, mountain bikes, you know, doing this crazy sort of off-road stuff. The other thing that it does, it just makes the bike feel really secure on the road. It pins down, it just always stays in contact. And it means that you can travel at the higher speeds um, without even realizing. So 30 mile an hour on this was no problem at all. Um, it probably felt more like I was still doing 15 mile an hour. Let's do a pricing game. So this is called Dan guesses what the price of this bike is, and then we'll compare how it, how it actually works out. So I'm thinking 
something like a Nevo or a Charger is going to start from around about five grand. So this must start from just over six thousand pounds. Going up to the top spec version of this um, with a roll-off hub on it, we're really starting to go into the seven and a half, eight thousand pounds sort of region uh, with all the various bits and pieces you can put on it. So that's kind of the ballpark you'll be looking at. How close was I? With top number is 10,114. Oh, what the that, hell? How has like, that happened? That's with everything. Oh, we've got an extra speed. battery, haven't we? Yeah, Go on. yes, the dual battery is a big... Go on, what's, what's the bottom price? Six thousand. You're right on 6,290, you're right on Okay, that. so I'm quite good. So the price of this bike, um, having now had a chat and work out what the actual price is, starting around about £6,200. That will get you the single battery version of this bike with a chain of cassette on it. And um, if you want to go all the way to the very top spec, you really can push this bike a very, very long way. You can go for dual batteries, so 1,250 watt hours. You can go for a roll-off E14 hub. You can go for a Kiox 500 display. You can go for GX tires. You can go for front racks and bags on it. You can go for an additional chain lock as well. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff and I can't think of any other bits in there. If you do that, then you really are getting on towards the £10,000 mark. So this is really at the very top of the Reese and Muller range and it sits alongside bikes like the Delight 4 and the Super Delight, um, which really are absolute leaders in the class for um, this type of premium e-bike. Things I've really liked about it, I've liked the really relaxed feel of it. So it hasn't felt um, like it's pushing me to go faster and it wants me to do more stupid stuff, which normally happens. Um, and when I've been on the tarmac, it's been super smooth. It's been, uh, it's been really pleasurable to, to uh, ride. When we've taken it off road, which wasn't what this bike um, in this specification was actually designed for, we found it a little bit more tricky. So we've been using the um, Schwalbe Moto X tyres and the comfort handlebar riding around some rocky bits and pieces and it's been a little bit difficult to control um, but that's all been made up for the fact that this bike is designed to be on the tarmac. This is meant to be sort of cruising backwards and forwards to work, going to the cafes and the pubs at the weekend, just being super super comfortable, really easy to use and um, it's been brilliant for that. If I was to design this or specify this bike for myself I should really do that because I don't go out that much anymore, but um, what I would probably go for is the flat handlebar, so the standard handlebar, I'd probably put a GX pack on it. I would definitely go for the roll-off hub. I know it's massively expensive. There's no getting away from it. It is expensive, but once you've paid for it, it is the best thing you can possibly have. Um, I've specified myself bikes in the past where I've saved money and I've gone for a chain cassette, and within a month, I'm really annoyed um, that I hadn't gone for the roll-off hub so I would definitely be putting a roll-off hub on it if you went for the knobbly tires flat handlebars roll-off hub you know you're gonna have no problem at all riding this one off-road going doing some of the really sort of fun adventuring stuff but then still having the benefit of the accessibility and being able to step through um, to get on the bike what we find um, most of the customers or some of the customers that um, are buying this bike have considered bikes like the Delight 4 or the Super Delight. And when they've gone to swing their leg over the rear rack, because it's a lot higher, because it's got this rear swing arm and we need this gap in here, uh, they struggle to swing over and get onto it. So something like the Homage is the next best thing you can go to, because you can still step onto the bike, but you've got the benefit of the full suspension, knobbly tires, everything you could want to be able to go um, off-road touring. So it's a very capable all-round bike. You just need to think carefully about the specification you go for. If having watched this review, you are now really excited about this bike and interested in finding out more about it, um, you can come to our showroom in Nailsworth where we have them available to try, or you can just pick up the phone or send us an email, get in contact, and we can provide you with more information, quotations, and get you riding one of these fantastic Reese and Muller Homage Falls. It's a wrap! Pub! <laughs>